So welcome, Manik and Avni. Uh, this is for the Bharat Joro Yatra that you have started in Kanyakumari. Uh, I believe you are highly excited because it looks like a very daunting kind of a journey. I'd like to ask you a few things about what it means, why this journey, what you are looking to achieve through it. And uh, the audience is curious because nobody knows, are you really it looks really an impossible task to go walk all the way from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. And we want to know a little more details about it. My yes. first question to you, Avni, is uh, why? what is Bharat Yoru Yatra? What is its philosophy? Why it? Right. Thank you so much, Jyoti, for uh, having us uh, you know, talk to you and talk to the audience to you. Uh, you know, there are three main pillars of the Bharat Joro Yatra. We all know that our economy has never been in a more worse shape. Of course, the BJP government says that it's because of COVID uh, and, you know, that things are bad pretty, you know, internationally things are pretty bad economically. But we know that the major reason is misgovernance. You know, I don't think in the BJP government, they really take economics seriously because the numbers and the statistics is out there for all of us to see. The unemployment are staggering. The price rise is at a, you know all-time high. So first reason is take these issues of price rise and unemployment, largely the economic umbrella to the people. The second thing is about governance issues, right? See, it's not about politics. India is about protecting its democracy. And today we see, I mean, every, every political party would maybe at some point use, you know, these different agencies towards their own political agendas. But today what we are seeing is a deep capture of public institutions, be that the ED, be that the CBI, you know, be that the judiciary, so on and so forth. So we are wanting to take this message to the people that this is a threat to our democracy. So that's the kind of second pillar. And the third pillar is that communal harmony. See, when we were kids, you know, we used to write an essay on unity and diversity. That's the motto of India. But we think that BJP, uh, you know, with this fascist attitude, wants to impose this idea of one India on everybody, right? We are one, but our strength lies in the fact that we're all different people. We speak uh, different languages, we come from different cultures, we come from different religions. But India is an experiment. India is an experiment where different streams of religions and cultures were, you know, th were, were thriving. Uh, and that is what makes us unique. And we think that this very idea of India is under threat today. So to answer your question in brief, our goal with this Yatra is, you know, to take this message to people and also to listen to people. For me individually, I think this is a very spiritual journey to understand uh, the people of my country. So that's what I am looking at. Right. You have been formerly a vice president of AIPC and I believe a lot of other people, com Congress uh, workers have joined you. Tell me what is your role in this? Uh, so what are you trying to achieve? Uh, what is the plan for you? What exactly it entails? What is the journey going to look like? Uh, give us yeah. an idea about that. So I've been part of Professionals Congress as the Vice President of Delhi earlier. But currently, I'm the National Legal Aid Coordinator for Myla Congress and the Spokesperson for Youth Congress. So my name was, uh, you know, what the, so the process was that different frontal organizations were asked to nominate people for this yatra. And luckily for me, my name was sent both from the Youth Congress and the Myla Congress. And then there was a round of interview. Uh, for the Youth Congress, there was also a fitness test. And we were interviewed by Digvijay Singh Ji and Mukul Vasnik Ji. And they asked us, a, you know, a couple of questions, basically to test if we were mentally ready because physically, you know, maybe some of us are more physically fit than others. But... None of us have taken such an arduous journey. So the question was, are you mentally prepared and what are your goals? Why do you want to do this yatra? Will you really so be able to yatra, see this through? Sorry, I just interrupted. The yatra actually means actually walking on foot from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. That's uh, right. That's right? right. That's right. So we are walking about 3,500 kilometers approximately crossing 12 states into union territories um, and walking it entirely uh, along with Rahul Gandhiji. So a lot of people had questions. How Is Rahul it, Gandhiji going to walk? How He's going to walk the entire there? journey. Sorry? So how many of you are going to be there? So we are about 100 Padhyatris who are full-time Padhyatris who are going to be walking with Rahul Gandhiji the entire time. But then as we cross from states, we're going to have thousands of people joining us. So for example, today we started the Yatra. We flagged off the Yatra from Kanyakumari. <clears throat> and it was a sight to behold because people came out of their homes, you know, women, children, young people even old people you know coming out in the streets and joining the yatra so i think as the yatra progresses many people will join but there are 100 uh, full-time padhyatris 
So tell me, is Rahul Gandhi going to be all through during this journey, and is he going to yes. work well with you? See, I can tell you one thing about Rahul Gandhi ji. He's a man of his words, you know. And many people had expressed doubts, but today was a proof. I'm a lawyer, so I believe in evidence. Today was a proof that it's very hard to catch up with Rahul Gandhi ji. He's the fittest amongst all. So he was almost, you know, like walking uh, at a normal pace for him. But we all had to kind of really run to catch up with him. So um, he is going to walk the entire journey. So logistically, how is this going to be possible? Where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to live in the night? And where are you going to eat? As you know, that it's not just a Congress party; it's a movement uh, who's behind the Bharat Jodo Yatra with 150 civil society actors joining us. So, uh, as we move day to day, uh, there are caravans, as we are calling them, or containers. So there is a makeshift arrangement that's made for all the full-time padyatris, and Rahul Gandhi will also be staying in one of them. So those will keep moving along with us. So every time, every day, once we have done the day's walking. About let's say 22 to 25 kilometers on average, and uh, then we would go uh, in the evening to rest in these caravans. So everything will be mobile. It's a moving caravan. It's a moving uh, movement, and of course there are many people on the way. You know who are helping with, you know, many many things. So it's it's a movement really. It's the energy. Wonderful. But uh, logistically, it's the caravans. What about the security? There is very high. There is very high uh, security because Rahul Gandhi ji uh, is uh, you know with us. So there is a very high security. We've been given these passes, which are all access passes. So only anybody with these passes are allowed inside the caravans. Of course, in the day, anybody can join the yatra and anybody can walk. But inside the caravans, it's only access through these paths uh, that will be allowed. Wonderful. I mean, it sounds very exciting. Sounds like an unprecedented thing. Something that India has not seen before. It uh, it will perhaps. Uh, become more clear over the past uh, over the next few months how it actually looks like. Uh, tell me a little bit. Uh, I mean, these the issues that you raised. How is a Pada Yatra going to help create awareness on those issues? How are you expecting that to happen? Uh, see, Jaya, we are in Kanya Kumari as we speak, uh, and as you know, Swami Vivekananda said to have attained enlightenment in Kanya Kumari. And it was after Kanya Kumari that he went to address the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago. This was uh, from 11 to 27th of September 1893, uh, September month 1893, long, long time back. But we feel that the message of Swami Vivekananda was that Vedanta teaches you. If there's one thing that you know, Vedanta, the ancient Hindu religion, teaches you, it is this: that we are all one. The entire universe is one. He didn't even say mankind. He said the entire universe is one. And he said, if you look at quantum physics, uh, you can break down particles into subparticles, but you can never break it down to a point where you can say this is different from everything else. So he said, not just the human beings, but the rivers, the mountains, you know, the animals, the humans, irrespective of their differences of caste, creed, language, religion, color, you know, they are one. And we think that you know this idea of oneness is by Coming down on grassroots amongst people and taking, you know, everybody along with you to remind people, to remind ourselves uh, that it is a oneness of, you know, the universe, the 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 spiritualization of mankind is what's required. So I think it's with this larger message that you see the energy that we are imbued with today uh, as we undertake this yatra. Wonderful. How are you actually communicating the granular issues, the granular granular three issues that you talked about to the people who are coming in masses? How are you talking to them about it? Yeah, that's a good question, Jaya. So the schedule is such that we start walking at seven in the morning every day, and we walk till about let's say ten thirty, covering roughly let's say thirteen to fourteen kilometers, and then we we stop at a place, and there that's when we do jana sabhas. So we in, we're interacting with the local people. Trying to understand what their issues are, you know, meeting uh, local activists. So that's the interaction time. Then again, we start walking. Let's say about three thirty, four o'clock, and we'll walk up till seven o'clock, covering another ten, twelve kilometers, uh, and then we sort of pause for the day. So this interaction time in between is designed into the entire schedule, so that there is a lot of opportunity to interact with the local people. So far, what is the kind of response you have seen from civil society? I mean, not just from Congress. I mean, today you should just go on social media uh, because you know anybody who's not in Kannur, Kumar, yeah. not in Tamil Nadu, the easiest way for them is just log in anywhere to just you know Facebook, uh, Instagram, and look at the visuals. You know, it's it's unparalleled what we're seeing today. So I think the response is absolutely phenomenal, and people are appreciating that this is not a political rally. This is not a rally to win an election. 
but that this is a rally to bring people together and bring India together. This is a wonderful philosophy. I wish you all the best. I hope to cover more of this over the coming few months and I'm get, uh, hoping to see a lot of momentum gain, gain into it, not uh, for any political reasons, but for an awareness for a better India, better life for citizens and a more harmonious uh, way. Thank of you. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much for joining. Jai Hind. Bye. Jai Hind.